I understand my business so much more now when I think about it this way. We now obsess daily over our sales numbers. Hey, pronouncers, welcome back. Exciting new episode. And here's why. Nick, um, we've got a guy that studied... His name's Nick, sorry. We've got a guy that studied Bruce. screen printing pricing for his MBA, like a, his thesis for his MBA. My apologies to the people who have done their MBA and if I'm saying these things, these terminologies wrong, but he's got something that's that's pretty eye-opening actually as to how you should really be thinking about profitability and how you should be thinking about pricing as a whole. I met Nick and I'll go into it in the episode three, four years ago. Um, he reached out to me. And uh, he did part of his thesis on our shop and um, reimagined the way we thought of profitability. And so this is a really, really fun episode. Um, so like, subscribe. We're almost at 10,000 followers, Bruce. Subscribers. <laughs> Do we We're get a plaque there. or no? What? Do we get a plaque? I think it's at 100. <laughs> All right. Let's talk sponsors. Who do we got? Easy way. You know you shouldn't be spending all day cleaning dirty screens. That's because Easyway's line of environmentally conscious chemicals will get the job done faster, more efficiently, and cost you a fraction of the cost per screen. Farrag's favorite chemicals are 701, 842. And uh, honestly, they just are a great company because they work with 100 plus distributors. And they're also there to be able to help with best practices, how to's, and just general questions. Um, you, you always need a good support partner, especially when you're growing the business. So, Check them out. Easy way. Appreciate you guys. If you haven't already heard of Multicraft underscore daddy, um, you're living under a rock because Multicraft opened up their new facility in Chicago, in the Chicago suburbs this past weekend, um, working with rock. And it was awesome. So many shops from around the country flew in. Um, and we're just super proud of Dave Eggers and the team. Because now they have a facility that is incredible. And so if you need ink supplies or a daddy, Multicraft Screen Printing and Digital Supplies for over 50 years has been providing you with top brands at competitive prices. Mention the Printavo podcast and receive an extra 10% off your order. And I learned that the PMI tape, if you order it from Multicraft Daddy, is a little special. There's a little, little surprise in there. So <laughs> hit them up. Um, super cool. That's dope. Supercolor has innovated on its transfer and you can try it. If you haven't tried them out, use Printavo 15. You get 15% off your first order. Give them a shot. They're actually really, really good. These are their next gen transfers. So they're easier to peel and they've tested them on so many different types of heat presses. So they'll work in your shop too. And when they're easy to peel, you know, you have more confidence. If you got more confidence, you could decorate faster and make more money. And we all know time is money. Steven knows that, right? Sometimes. <laughs> so they got your back regardless of the type of the equipment. Supercolor uh, has the experience and now the next gen heat transfers to make your experience super fast and super easy. Thanks, guys. Printable 15, that gets 15% off your first order. If you need a solution to improve efficiency and reduce costs in your art department, go to 1900hotstuff.com because there you'll find um, Graphic Source. Graphic Source offers industry leading outsource options for your shop by truly becoming part of your team. They plug and play with Printavo and other shop management softwares when it comes to SEPs, mocks, creative art, order management, embroidery, digitizing, back office admin. In customer service, there's no better company in our industry to work with. They have over 30 years in the game. They understand shop needs. And they have a pr proven track record of success. Hit up Graphic Source for your art staffing needs. Men mention the Printavo Pod, um, and uh, you'll just you'll brighten Nick Wood's day up. So thanks, Nick, and the team at Graphic Source. We use them at Campus Inc. They are a no brainer. All right, let's get to the episode. We are live. Nick, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, you are at the, or were at Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, but wait, uh, you've got some really cool stuff on um, that you've studied. I really want to dive into here, but how did you and Steven, how'd you guys meet? Long time listener, first time caller. Yeah. I think I just shot him an email. Uh, been a long time fan of the podcast and 
I had to do a thesis as part of my business school studies. And what drove me wild is trying to understand costing and pricing and understanding profitability in our industry, right? Print world. And I loved the content you guys pushed out. And I said, a lot of these topics are relevant. Wanted to pick your brain. And, and that leads us to today. So I get a message from Nick. Uh, and I think of it, well, you were in Germany, right? Yeah. And you're yeah. like, I'm doing my thesis on print shop profitability. Can I pick, can I help you? And I'm like, did the heavens open up or something? <laughs> <laughs> this is the craziest spam I've ever gotten. I was like, huh. And then you, Wait a minute. you sent me like it's not spam. your thematic approach and what you're doing. And I'm like, whoa. Uh, and so we, we, we kind of worked on a series of, I don't know, seven, eight, nine calls. And, and Nick actually dug into our business and kind of re, re, reframed and re the way that we look at profitability which I thought was super interesting and probably what we're going to talk a lot about today. Um, but Nick, why the heck would you want to get into, why would you want to get your MBA or do your thesis on profitability of printing? I'm really lucky. The high school I went to in St. Paul, Minnesota ended up having a print program and it was almost like a small to medium sized printing company in the high school and you could learn from the graphic design aspect to running a business all about how does print work. So at a young age, I knew this is an industry that I'm really passionate about. And then long-term goals of one day aspiring to, to lead a company or leaving a lasting impact on our industry, I knew the higher education route for my journey uh, was critical. And then thinking about big challenges in the industry, um, are these topics, right? So I said, I'm going to roll up the sleeves and see how might studying this further be able to help print companies, small, medium, and large. We're all tackling the same challenges out there. That's pretty crazy. I do see from your resume too, Bachelor of Science, print media, and then uh, MBA right after. What a combo. You know what's funny? Uh, Matt Marcotte, good friend and, and uh, works at Printavo, always boasts about his printing degree. It's like the first thing you'll always, well, you have a degree, but you have like your MBA in print shop. So sorry, Marcotte. Uh, <laughs> we got a one-upper. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Nick, and then, so from college to like, did you, did you work in the printing industry at all? Tell us a little about your background so we can kind of set the stage for, for listeners. So I've been sort of hacking two passions, traveling the world and working in the printing industry. And the last 12 years, I've had four international relocation assignments around the world. I've been to over 40 countries. So essentially designing my career path where I can continue progressing in the printing industry, but at the same time, travel and see the world. So I've worked for both companies who manufacture equipment and for printing companies themselves. So that's sort of been... The last 12 years, friends and family saying, where's Nick? What what phone number does he have now? What address is he at? But it's been a, a heck of a journey. And my wife and I relocated back from Germany where we were the last four years to Minnesota. That's our home base where we both grew Sweet. Up. That's awesome. Um, I could, we could go in a lot of ways. I want to go, I want to get to profitability here. You yep. came to me and said the way that you're thinking about profit is all wrong. So, yeah. uh, you know... OGs in the space that think they have it right. We're here to tell you today, you're wrong. <laughs> Love the content from Print Hustler community. I found myself frustrated saying, we're working so hard to try to understand what are our costs and, and reaching profit seems to be some big complex equation and, and combination of my own 10 plus years um, and my, my studies in business school, I thought, let's simplify this, right? Maybe we can work smarter and not harder. You know, part of the discussion here is sort of sharing that mindset, right? It's just one methodology of looking at it. But I really believe no matter what size shop you are, going back to the basics and fundamentals and seeing things clearly from a 30,000 foot view, it's going to empower you to profit by design and not Profit by prayer, right? Whoa. You are in control of your business. Clip that one. Clip it. Clip alert. 
clip. Wait, so, so was the goal, the, the whole goal with setting this up is to, I want to help shops be more profitable with their pricing or, or understand sort of their true costs of, of running jobs. Like what was that end goal? I found three things. So one is I found more times than not businesses don't truly understand their costs and it's not necessarily shame on them. It's, it's complicated traditional way of thinking. So that's kind of the, the teaser on costs, right? And then when it comes to pricing, often our industry feels like a race to the bottom. And then for profitability, it can often feel like hope and prayer, right? Let's see what our accountant tells us. How did we do? You're not driving your business looking through the, the front windshield. You're looking through the rearview mirror. So I'd love to talk about a methodology. And it's nothing that Nick invented. This is a lot of kind of basic business fundamentals that's been out there for ages. How can you tie those three together in order to take control of your business, understand how it all links together and how for your customers, for your products, can you put it together to get to profit? So, right? that's the so goal the and, and we, we, uh, after we raised some money, we hired a CFO because God knows I can't do that. Uh, and a lot of the terminology that he uses, I sometimes I'm like, dude, I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. And, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're going to make an adjustment here. And this is a crude there. And then, you know, our cash flow is over here. They're like, wait, and I'm we, like, do we make our, money or no? Can you just tell me? It, it depends how you look at it, Steven. <laughs> I literally, I'm like, okay, give me the like, can I buy this or not? <laughs> um, and I think that's the biggest problem is accountants after a month's end, clean up your books, but they don't make you profitable. In fact, they probably hide, you know, and, and, and suppress the, the real truths about your business. And so, um, what's really interesting is we learn from like Mike McCallowitz profit first, which is a, a really strong methodology of really being selfish and, and frugal and stubborn about paying yourself for which I think is fantastic, but dive into this profit land contribution margin. Let's, let's hear it. We're going to talk about a thing called contribution margin. Certainly you can Google YouTube it, but we're going to keep things simple here. So when you look at a business, there's two types of costs, right? So we take all costs and we're going to put them into two buckets. One is your fixed costs. Think of your lease in your business, right? And when we talk about fixed costs, it's just saying independent of how many shirts you print a month, each month, the cost of your lease, that's fixed. That's not can, changing. Can we, can we put real numbers as examples too? I, and I'll, I'll keep repeating them to, to follow along. So let's say, you know, what do you, what do you think is a realistic number, Stephen, per month? Say 50K, 100K. Let's do 100 to make it easy to... Of no, what? The, like uh, the fixed cost aspect. Well, think about it like this. Okay, I, I actually, me and Nick, I would keep asking him this question over and over again. And he, I think we came to the conclusion is what would it take to run your business without printing a single shirt and keeping all your lights on. And so I even for even to make it simpler, I even put ink in that because I'm like I I'm going to have to have ink on the shelf. I'm going to have to have all of these things before I open up my doors. I'm going to have to have employees here, all of those things. And that was the way that I thought about it. Nick, is there any variance in what you can, so what goes into your fixed costs? You said your lease. So Bruce, if you know, could be mm -hmm. a couple thousand dollars a month, what else? You know, insurance that's independent, no matter how many t-shirts you print a month, right? Those are just fixed costs that stay the same. Those are just two simple examples in the business salaries for salaried employees, right? Independent of the shirts, you're paying them that same amount each month. That's another big. Okay. Example. So you're basically your entire payroll. It's, it's, you could basically assume you're going to have those employees there one way or the other. Okay. Right. Um, what other, what are other fixed costs? So we said like your utilities, your leases, uh, your phone bill, your internet. Um, wh where do you draw the line on consumables? Like computer paper. Yeah. I like to just keep things simple. So you could go, and I've seen a lot of, in your profit and loss statement or income statement, hundreds of rows of line items, right? But I think to keep things simple, um, not spending too much thought going to each and every nitty gritty and just trying to simplify the buckets. So 
if I, maybe I'll flip kind of answering your question, Stephen. When I think about variable costs, that would be a great example of a t-shirt, right? So the more t-shirts you print in a month, the more total costs of, of t-shirts you're going to have. The, the t-shirt expenditure kind of does this with your volume where the fixed cost, like your lease, that stays flat each month. So I'd recommend, and once again, you can Google YouTube, however you want to define fixed and variable, go through the business and put each of those expenses in the one of two buckets. And zooming out when we talk about profitability, hang with me here, for a business to make money, you need to cover those fixed costs every month. So there's a simple formula you can do in your business called contribution margin. And you can look at what's our total sales or revenue, and we're gonna subtract out those variable costs. And what's left over, those are contribution margin dollars. And those help each month climb the mountain of your fixed costs. So to, to keep things very simple, what's the equation to understand is my business gonna make money this month? Well, you need to know what are your fixed costs. And then you need to compare that with the contribution margin dollars. And if those are greater than your fixed costs, you're gonna be into profit land, if you will. Wait, yeah. So so can you reiterate the formula of the contribution margin here? Yep. Sales minus variable costs equals contribution. Okay. At Campus Inc., we made variable costs just shirts, blank materials. That's how simple we made it. Every other expense in our business, we declared a fixed cost. Anything that it took, so like embroidery, like if we was if we subbed something out, that would be a variable cost. If we bought transfers from Supercolor, that would be a variable cost. Um, but it was what it took to actually get the shirts in our building and all the supplies that it would need to, to make those shirts. But the labor to print the shirts, we kept that under our fixed costs. And quite often that is the case because people can overthink it and say, well, technically we can have overtime. I found a lot of shops. If you ask what kind of shifts do you do? We're Monday through Friday from this time to this time, right? And a, a lot of times you're not able to let those people go if there's not work. You're probably cleaning up shop, getting organized. Um, so in my opinion, from what I've seen a lot of companies, to Stephen's point, um, the labor in the shop tends to be more fixed than variable. But once again, try to the KISS acronym, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Don't can, can we go to Bruce's analogy? analogy? So say, Bruce, you calculate in your little, you know, your shop, all of your fixed costs are 50 grand a year. And that includes your payroll, okay? 50 a year a month. Oh, 50 a month, sorry. 50 a month, okay? Every order that you get, you literally start, and Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, you start the month at negative $50,000. You're literally below sea level. And every order you get chips away at it. So if you get an order for $1,000 and the shirts cost $300, you've added $700 to get you closer to sea level. And now your new number is $49,300. Yeah, you're, you're thinking of it right. So an analogy a lot of people use is knowing your fixed cost per month, that's the nut you have to crack every month. Or you could say that's the mountain I have to climb. So it's, it's a beautiful analogy what you're doing because you understand what's the mountain I have to climb, call it $50,000 per month. And then I know every job I sell, I look at what's the sales minus the variable costs. Maybe for that one t-shirt, you sell it for 20, your t-shirt costs five, keeping things simple, that's $15. So that's $15 you have to climbing that mountain. And, and then, and then it starts to get interesting because you can say, well, how many shirts do I need to sell each month in order to break even? Or let's not as an industry, just think about break even. Where do you want to be for profitability, right? You can do, you can do the math to say, well, then how many shirts do I have to be to make a hundred grand in the month? It, it can start to kind of make it clear to you as a business, what do I need to sell? How much sales do I have to bring in in order to get where I want to be financially? And owner's pay should be included in fixed costs, right? I would yeah. say. Okay. Yep. 
And so the goal is you're, you're kind of filling up. Like I like that analogy, Farag. It's like, you know, there's a, there's a thermometer and you're, you're adding to that contribution adds up to, to fill up to equal, let's call it even fixed cost plus profit then, you know, to exactly to, to feel comfortable. Yep. Okay. So yep. taking this, um, how do you, how does this correlate then into what to charge? Because that I I always it always gets a little confusing, right? When you say, "Well, uh, you know, if I sold, uh, let's say, ten jobs at a higher cost, that's very different than fifty jobs, depending on you know market pricing and so on." But like, how how do you correlate the two? So knowing your fixed costs each month or the mountain you have to climb, that is a huge context to know what is the barrier I have to reach to become profitable. So then as a business owner, you start to say, looking at your customer base and doing some analysis based off of the, the numbers you have, I would, I love kind of this philosophy saying, what is the market price um, plus minus for what the customer is willing to pay? So, you know, you've got customers who um, perhaps you've got great service, fast turnaround, you're able to charge more. You have some that are just bottom price feeders, right? Going around asking for lots of estimates, but understanding in your customer base, um, which customers are you able to get as much contribution margin dollars as possible? Because at the end of the day, every dollar that you're able to get from the customer for what they're willing to pay, that helps you climb the mountain. And it can be a little bit dangerous because you could say, well, any job that I can sell above my t-shirt cost or variable cost is good for the business. Yes, it, it does help you contribute, but if you get into that mindset, it could be too easy to say, well, then we can discount further or every job that comes in is good. It, it's just kind of situational of, of where you're at with the business. Does that help answer it or should we kind of riff it? Yeah, a little I, more? I think this is okay. So Nick, something that you said to me, and this ties back to pricing is, can your price change throughout the month based on where your business is at? from a contribution margin standpoint. So what I mean by that is if Bruce, going back to your example, to cover your nut every month is $50,000. Bruce is in there heat pressing every single shirt. Um, <laughs> hey, we're in the wall of pro territory now. Okay. Uh, Shots out heat press nation. All right. Uh, so you're, you're, you know, if Bruce knows that by the 20th of the month, he gets profitable for the month, that's wherever you now call it profit land and everything is kind of gravy Correct. a little bit or you are now living in, you know, like in profitability at that point. That's when you want to take in as much work as possible and drive that top line. And because you already covered your nut for the month, is that what you're saying? Correct. So what Steven's explaining is until you climb the mountain of your fixed costs, every contribution margin dollar is used to, to climb that mountain. But once you meet your fixed costs, every contribution margin dollar, quote unquote, drops to the bottom or goes to your profitability. So as a business owner, if you know it's the 20th of the month, you've covered your fixed costs. I know every contribution margin dollar I bring can drop to the bottom. Maybe a customer who's always just looking for the cheapest price comes to you. In the past, you wouldn't have entertained it. Well, if you know, I've already covered my fixed costs um, and every contribution margin dollar that I bring is going to profit. Maybe you would entertain that more than you would in the past. It, it's situational analysis, but it's all about knowing where you stand in the month for your business. And that's a fundamental difference. You're not waiting for your accountant to come to you in the previous, in, in, in the next month saying, how did you do profitability in the month you're driving your business? you're knowing then and there with the thermometer, how are you performing? And, and that's a huge shift. And that's shift. that last dollar income. A lot of my employees will be like, Steven, sometimes we don't understand how you price when they ask me for like a price. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just seeing where we're at for the month. And if we can jam it in, let's take it, you know? Um, and that's called like last dollar income. And some of your most profitable, most profitable days are when you can jam in a couple more jobs. Um, and and that's, that's when it gets gravy. The other thing that really helps contribution margin 
is selling goods that you don't touch, literally. And so like if you're not selling promo products, you need to go to the ASI show and learn how to do it. Because if you sell a thousand water bottles and it makes you three bucks a water bottle and you literally drop ship it to the customer, that thermometer, you just added three thousand dollars to it. Right. You know? Of pure there's there's no variable cost. Then you yeah, say. there's I mean, there's nothing on it. It's literally just drop ship. Right? Although would you say the cost of the well, okay, okay, sure. Subtract out the variable cost of the water bottle, so the sale minus, so that that profit of that item goes straight to the yeah, just dumps in the pot to and, the thermometer. And, so, Nick, how does this affect? Okay, accountants gonna my my CFO Steve's gonna be listening to this, and he's gonna be like, well, accrual. Like, how how does this when you when you tell your accountants about this? This is funny business to them. They don't really care about this. Like. How, how does that relationship work? Because this is this is just like a different mindset. Yeah, I don't take any credit for f- inventing something special. This is in a lot of dusty business accounting finance books sitting on shelves in every library and university. Uh, they call it cost volume profit analysis. So this is 101 in part of the curriculum that they went through in school. I have just found that our industry doesn't seem to have the awareness. And that's where I'm saying to all the print shops listening, if you're not already, this could be uh, an easy way to take control of your business and and visually just understand what's going on and then put a strategy against it. You could say, what are the segments of my business that bring in the most contribution margin? You could do some Moneyball, which favorite movie of all time. And this is kind of an arbitrage opportunity. You could say, What's my contribution margin per hour? And then it gets really fun to say, maybe this changes the way that I looked at jobs. That small job that flies through my shop, it doesn't bring a lot of margin dollars, but on a per hour basis, now it could start to look sexy. What if you could fill up your shop instead of long contract work with that shorter run? And when you compare in two eight-hour shifts, what's the difference of contribution margin dollars? It could be a day and night difference. So this is where I'd say start with the fundamentals of what does contribution margin mean and then apply a strategy to your business to thrive. That That's really interesting. So we have, we know every day what our nut is at Campus Inc. And I think listeners should try to figure this out and know how to calculate it quickly. So I'm going to, I'm going to run through it. And Bruce, tell me if this sounds right. Okay. You know, if you take your last month and your accountant gives it to you, um, you want to look at what those fixed are, costs are pretty quickly. So everything below your cost of goods sold, essentially. You're going to take that number and you're going to divide it by 20. The number 20 is relevant because there's five working days in a week. And I think there's four weeks in a month. And so that is what your nut is every single day. Um, and we oftentimes calculate it and then we'll recalculate it a couple months later. Um, you know, for us, it could be anywhere from 10 to $18,000 per day, um, depending on the seasonality and, and where we're at. Once you know that number, every single day, you can see how many orders you sold. So that'll tell you like what's getting put into the pot. You can see how many orders you got out, and that'll tell you every single day if you covered covered that. Um, and so we we know that and we see it. And actually, like in Printavo, we set up a Slack message to hit every time an order's processed, so we can quickly know that contribution margin. But Nick, you does that make sense, Bruce? Yeah, that's interesting. I, I think where it's still is a bit gray is applying it, right? So I think from a high level, it makes total sense. All right, so now how do I take my pricing to really be able to accurately dial this in? And is that a sort of month by month sort of trial, which makes sense, right? And it's like, all right, let, let, let's try this pricing to see how we contribute to the margin. All right, man, didn't work super well. Let's try next month, a little bit higher or so on. You know, where does that... Nick can and and to to expand on this shops right now try to do cost per impression. Can you riff on 
the myths of how shops price and how they... This is really interesting because I think this is... Yeah, because the application of it, I think, can be really simple. I worked for a screen printing company in high school. It was for the high school. Did a quarter million dollars my senior year. That was just work hustling after school. So I understand the basics of screen printing industry. I come primarily from the printing industry that prints on paper. So large offset presses, digital presses. Um, but what I've seen, and I've seen some printable uh, calculators, we like to make it really complicated saying, here's all of our different types of costs and based off of this allocation, square footage or amount of hours, we're gonna try to magically say the, the cost of the shirt is this. And in my mind, that is, that's a lot of accounting fiction. It's a heck of a lot of work. And let's understand costs of what's fact. What, what fact is what that job costs to produce. It's the t-shirt. Technically, it's the ink on it. You use some emulsion and labor to me is more fixed than variable. And, and let's keep it simple. That is the cost of that job versus a crazy calculator with all this Frankenstein stuff that rarely comes to fruition. And I say, keep it simple. And keep it simple based off of facts, not this accounting Nick, fiction. Nick, and so what you're saying is fiction. And Bruce, I think this is where you're overcomplicating it. Shops try to do how fast my press is going to spin per hour, how much it costs to coat a screen, what it, you know, like they try to model out every part. Okay, this is how much art went into it. And when you try to model out 10 different variables, you're margin of error increases every single time and that that exponentially like Spot ruins on. the accuracy of your math your math and i don't know of a shop listening to this that is so precise and can like if we were to test everything it would be 100% accurate i think a lot of the mistakes that shops make in pricing is uh over assuming and modeling 10 fractions, like trying to combine 10, 10 factors at once. You're, you're preaching in the choir. And I want to add, I don't have a bias in everything I'm saying. I went into it using the traditional industry route of the Excel and craziness. And I just said, this is nuts. There's got to be a better way here. And I challenged it in my thesis. I was living in Germany. I worked with five companies around the world Um up to about $40 million uh, per year. So all, all different size shops. And I put this to test and I was able to prove to them that the way that they're doing their costing is not reality. And by applying this different perspective, this gives you clarity of your business. And Bruce, to answer your question you threw out there, how do you do pricing? For me, it's not a one size fit all strategy. It depends on your business. But I love the perspective saying, Sell it for as much as the customer is willing to pay. Because at the end of the day, you're just trying to maximize the contribution dollars. You're going to have some that you're able to get more. You're going to have some customers who you can get away with market price. And you're going to have those bottom feeders who it will be an aggressive price. But trying to meet them where they're at, trying to squeeze out as the highest price that you can for what they're willing to pay. Um, because... If you know in your business where your fixed cost is, all of those dollars based off of what they're willing to pay are going to help you climb that mountain and get to your profit land. That's just my take. Speechless. <laughs> um, okay. But but could you back... Okay. let's. If you did this for a month, could you then back into a price calculator that actually worked for you? But I think it depends on the number of jobs though, right? So let, let, let's just say let's just say the goal is to break even, but break even of the fixed cost includes the owner's pay and, and a little bit of profitability baked in, right? So that that's the thermometer. So that's the number we want to hit. Let's say our fixed costs were the 50K, but with the owner and so on, um, you know, it's at 70K, right? Okay, so 70K, could you then say on the average, so if we want to keep it simple, could we say an average size job is X dollars? And that essentially means I need an average of, you know, Y jobs. And here's an example pricing to be able to um, satisfy that to get to the margin. Now, obviously, every job is going to be different and there's big, there's small and all this weird stuff in between. But it's going to be impossible to get down in the nitty gritty, like you said. 
Yeah, we can. The simple equation is this. It's your fixed costs divided by the average contribution margin per shirt average, Bruce, to keep it simple. And that formula will tell you how many shirts at that average contribution margin do you need to sell to break even. If you want to put a profit in there, you just take your fixed costs plus what you want your profit to be and you divide it by the same thing the average contribution margin per shirt. And that tells you how many shirts you got to sell at that average contribution margin to hit your profit. So keeping it simple, right? That's what it would tell you. We have at Campus Inc. target COGS um, based on the order type. And so that's always my first question I'll ask an employee is, and our salesperson like, what, you know, what's the margin on that, that order. And when they ask me for, you know, some pricing help. And so it, it might be a good idea for shops to set, you know, three targets, right. And it could be, I want, you know, for basic t-shirts, I want my target cogs to be whatever, 25% for premium items that you're making more contribution margin, but less percentage, maybe it's 35%. For promo products, maybe it's 50%. And then you run it and you start to look and say, like, does that feel good? Because I think there's a little bit in a, in a small business, there's a little bit of gut and feel. It's not scientific. It's not as scientific as people make it out to be. Mm -hmm. you know? Wait, Stephen, yeah. if I want to run a quick example here. So what would you guess is a, is an average orders contribution margin for per shirt. So, you know, let's say a, a hundred shirt order, um, you know, simple. So, okay. In Campus Inc. vocabulary, we look at orders and order size. Mm -hmm. So we look at AOV, like average order value for us is okay. on the B2B side is like 1800 bucks. That's okay. our AOV. And we look at our contribution margin on it. Um, I'm, I don't know what that is off the top of my head and, you know, but let's just say it's 50%. So I know that on average, every job is contributing $900 to our contribution margin. Got it. And what would you, like, how many shirts would you guesstimate as in $1,800 in order? Again, you could be selling a $9 t-shirt or a $30 mm -hmm. hoodie. So that's irrelevant to me. Because the cost of the product varies so much in our industry that would you rather sell 10 Carhartts and make 50 bucks a piece, right? Or 50 t-shirts and make 10 bucks a piece, right? Okay. So, and that's, um, I worked with a printer in the Netherlands and they printed four main types of products, like brochures, flyers, et cetera. And we looked at those four segments of his business. What was the contribution margin in each? And by golly, he said, Nick, now that I understand this, I want to tailor what I offer to be the, this, the higher contribution mm -hmm. margin, obviously, Smart. right? So by looking at the different segments, what could be t-shirts, sweatshirts, whatever, you kind of start to understand what's the contribution margin. And then as an owner, perhaps that influences what you want to sell or, you know what I mean? It, it's that visibility of how much bang for the buck am I getting by offering these? A lot of shops will ask like how I do pricing for online stores and we do retail pricing across the board. We don't give bulk discounts or anything like that. And uh, the reason we do it is we like the contribution margin at the smaller levels. Even if the order is, is small, it, it covers it. Um, and then when they get big, it's gravy. And so um, for us, we're learning that if we can perfect our D to C, there's a lot more contribution margin in, you know, uh, printing for an online store or this than necessarily doing a contract job uh, a couple bucks a print, you know. And so what we're starting to do is actually start subbing out bulk orders uh, and keeping the super high profit stuff in house. Um, so we don't even have to think about it, um, at different parts of it. So I think to your point, Nick, as businesses are growing, transforming, learning about new avenues, uh, 
they're going to constantly be adapting what they want to position themselves in. And the best way to do it is to look at what this actually brings you. So, super so cool. yep. what I'm getting from this and it's starting to click more for me is that instead of really focusing more on the exact, you know, maybe pricing matrix that, it, that, that this comes out of it's which of my jobs that are currently running have the best contribution margin is a question. Another question is how do I get more contribution margin out of jobs that I'm getting now? How do I adjust variables there, whether it's reducing variable costs of the job or increasing the sale of the job um, from or a pricing your product perspective. mix? Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So an upsell, Sell product hoodies, mix, yep. um, Carhartt. <laughs> um, and then helping to use that to now measure that contribution margin per month. Uh, Down to per yeah. hour. Wow. Interesting. Bruce, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, my man. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Did I, did I get the MBA certificate yet? Or <laughs> Bruce can barely finish a book. Uh, <laughs> he's working on, oh, still right. working on traction. <laughs> traction still by his bed stand. Um, so do you feel the relief? Is the weight off the shoulders a little bit? And once again, this is a tool in the toolbox. This doesn't solve everything in your business, but... I hope you can take a breath and, and hopefully see your business with a little more clarity versus hope and prayer and let me see what my account emails me. I, I hope we did good this month. Skip that. You're in the driver's seat. Do your thermometer, right? It's it's a game changer in my mind. That's interesting. I, I, um, I think what what also happens is if you have mistakes or redos, they sting a little bit more because they're detracting from your contribution margin. What else did you learn doing the study? I mean, it sounds like you talked to a lot of shops. Uh, how many, by the way, I'm kind of curious. And then also, you know, some other insights that came out of it. About five in total. So Belgium, Netherlands, two in the States, one in Germany, um, and various involvement, right? A, a bulk of it was me going on site for three days. Some of it was remote, but I came into this unbiased, testing out a theory. And sure enough, every printing company I worked with, no matter the size or what they were printing, it was relevant. And the owner said, this is really neat. So it was really satisfying for me to go in with frustration. I don't get the way this industry costs. Why is our pricing race to the bottom? And why is profit something that is a mystery and being in the driver's seat? But it was blood, sweat and tears learning all of this and I don't know if gray hair is showing or not, but nah, you do a good job of not dying it. So, um, and so just for context, <laughs> Nick, Nick dove into our P and L and remodeled it all. Um, and like really, really, really went into it. Um, well, what did you pull then, Steven? Like from, from this pro, like what, what clarified or what were takeaways for you guys? Clarity in vision. Like I understand my business so much more now when I think about it this way. That that was first like step number one because I don't understand accrual and cash and all that stuff doesn't make sense to me. Um, sort of does, but there was like a, a big like aha moment and clarity. From there, it was buying the team into the same concept, and so we now obsess daily over our sales numbers. Um, and we like there was a group of us that whiteboarded what the business costs every month. And someone says, so you're telling me every month, every day, we need to do over this amount. What if we just charted that every single day? And we have now turned sales into a little bit of a game because we know what it's getting us and, and where it gets exciting and stuff like that. So now the accountants still do their thing. Bookkeepers still send out invoices Prepaid, not prepaid, whatever. That's a whole nother conversation. But there was so much more clarity um, in making it a daily game um, or a weekly game that we played. So I don't know. Nick, where where can people learn more? Like, is there a, uh, I know you had this really cool presentation I saw a while ago. Is there anything online that people can read more about this? What you could do in terms of keywords to Google, you've got contribution margin. I'd also Google cost volume profit analysis or CVP analysis. 
And another one that's really cool would be throughput accounting. Go down the, the Google YouTube hole of all those videos and you'll be much more well equipped um, to take what we learned here, um, go a little further and apply it to what's relevant for you. You're also welcome to, to reach out to me on LinkedIn and love these conversations. Happy to assist where I can. I want to sound like a boss now. You're going to want to, are you guys looking at your CVP or uh, cost value and profit now? So have you guys <laughs> um, dug into that? Well, ac actually in Printavo, there's a really simple tool. The expenses tool is how my sales team will quickly um, know their uh, contribution margin. And we basically like, we're like, hey, add your expenses in for your cost of goods sold. Okay, what's getting added to the pie? And so a lot of them, um, you can actually do it uh, in Printavo, which is pretty cool. Um, and so, you know, you, you can also start to look at, if you take your fixed costs, um, you can publish those to your team and let them know, hey guys, 30% of every order is fixed costs, just so you know. And you just kind of set that baseline and so that way in their head, they go, okay, 30% here, 40% here. And you can really start to incentivize them that way to get excited about selling better. And in the month, you know, the thermometer, and then uh, on the 15th of the month, when Campus Inc. exceeds their fixed costs, Stephen's bringing in donuts and coffee because everyone's rallying saying, all right, now it's on. Everything we bring from the 15th on drops to the bottom line. And that's where you can start really incentivizing employees and actually paying them without um, necessarily overdoing it, right? And so that's where there's really, you know, if you see companies that double bonuses at the end of the month or when they hit a certain threshold, they give out you know, higher percentages on commission, it's because they know where that is um, in, in the sales world. So yeah, it all, it all ties together. Um, pretty well. This is super interesting. Nick, what's next for you? What are you, what are you working on these days? Currently I work for one of the largest printers in the world here, um, based out of Minnesota and just coming back from Europe, uh, getting more experience on the printing side of the industry versus working for the companies that make the equipment and loving that journey. That's cool. Nick. So thanks so much for being able to join us. Um, how do I pronounce your last name? Gar, Gar, Gar look. Yeah. Don't try that at home, Bruce. It's Ukrainian last name. Gower luck is how it's Gower Gower Nick G. All right. Nick Nick contribution G. Margin. We're going to put your LinkedIn also in the description here. Uh, I've got, I've got that here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thank you guys for all listening out there. We appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe. We love seeing that number tend to creep up. We're trying to hit 10K in subscribers, right? We're almost We're there. there. So hopefully you found this Let's helpful. Go. I love the idea of simplifying pricing. Uh, Nick, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for listening. Hopefully that was informative. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications if you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy all the stuff we're putting out, it's really helpful. We love to just be able to see it. That means that we're doing a good job. To subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.